Greetings and salutations, I'm Keb. Welcome back to this Let's Play of 80 Days, where we've reached Paris. <laughs> yeah, it's going to go a bit slow here. Onwards. And since the clock is ticking, we are immediately going to depart. We have some choices. We can go today to New Amsterdam. We could, although otherwise we can control the Orient Express from Paris. But we are going to go to Amsterdam. And yeah, the open road. This will become a bothersome route. So that will reduce Fog's health. Here we go. Will we get some options here? We might. We found a member of the Coachmaker's Guild to carry us to Amsterdam. She loaded the case, on, uh, the case onto the back, stoked the boiler and took off at a high speed along the coastal road, swearing around the, each corner uh, with considerable skill and I think a touch of showmanship. Uh, I clung on tight. This would be a terif terrific ride. Your character is now zestful. Uh, converse. So now we can talk to the driver. Uh, talk about Amsterdam. Uh, Amsterdam to Berlin. And now we got to the... Uh, yeah. So now we got the journey that way. Um, let's talk about Berlin. And that's all we could talk. We only get so many conversations with the characters. So we have to like pick and choose. But now we already know the route to Berlin. Which is what I wanted. Uh, once or twice, the metal-rimmed wheels lifted the chassis clear from the road on one side, only to bump down after a chuff and puff uh, more of the engine. We must have topped 40, perhaps even 50 miles an hour. Um, a fabulous way to travel. Uh, the, po the Polish inventor Bozek, who had first attached a perfectly decent locomotive engine underneath a flimsy wooden crate, was clearly a genius. Uh, okay, let's see. Such cars were growing in popularity, starting from their use in farmsteads and extending up through the classes. Huh. It was said the King of Sweden uh, now drove one, though presumably only to show solidarity with the beleaguered potato farmers. That says something about the situation up in Sweden in this game. As we rattle along, I spoke to our driver about uh, what lay ahead and learned that you could obtain carnival masks in Venice that will sell for a fortune in, Atal in Antalya. So now we got a little tidbit there. If we reach Venice, we can buy an item there that we can sell for a good profit in Antalya. But that'll dictate our, the way we travel. And, uh, and in Paris I did buy a bottle that will sell for a fortune in Berlin. As I said, you have to, um, you have to make your own money on this journey. So sometimes taking a detour is worth it because visiting the banks is ridiculously expensive. Uh, lost Rembrandt. Uh, you know what? Let's sell our evening jacket in favor of the Lost Rembrandt. I'm actually, I should have sold this sha shaving kit, but that's fine. Um, plan. Trip to Berlin. Uh, two days at 8 a.m. Uh, well, we can negotiate. Okay, so that's gonna... Now we'll go tomorrow before 8 a.m. Back to back to Amsterdam. Come on, click, 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 click. Tight click is ticking. Let's explore before while we still can. So now we've got other alternative routes. Uh, though the people of Amsterdam move about the canal side streets with a sense of optimism and good cheer... Um, one look at their buildings tells another story. Perhaps 200 years ago, this was the center of the world, but these days... Uh, tulips are no longer considered more valuable than gold, and the importance of Amsterdam is a little faded. Uh, I sympathize, bien, bien sûr. Oh my goodness, I, no, I can't speak French, so I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher everything here. Yeah, France's own position has been precarious since... Uh, that debacle with Napoleon. Apparemment uh, uh, is the most ill-advised venture. It is most ill-advised venture to attempt to con conquer all of Europe and Russia besides. Uh, would I walk along the Seine one, Seine one day, thinking back to our days of lost glory? I approached a street peddler for advice, who greeted me with a cheerful smile beneath a caterpillar-like moustache. 
Um, we're going around the world, I declared. Aha, he replied. You are like the influenza. <laughs> the peddler reached into his pocket. Buy an apple, one pound. I bought it and took it with a smile. Uh, what is the fastest way on from here? I asked. Car, I suppose. The roads are good. The canals used to be better, but now they seem almost out of date inside. It's a curse to be rich in the past. By, by the time the future rolls around, you're poor again. Maybe you'll be rich again sometime, I remarked. More from sheer optimism than any true conviction. What is the cheapest way out of the city? I asked. He mused. Most likely the hydrofoil heading north to Norway. He shrugged. It is fine enough if you don't mind being jolted about. And it's not exactly going around the world unless you don't mind which way. Is Norway worth visiting? Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> he shrugged and made a vague gesture. I heard the Norwegians are moving underground. Who knows? They have strange ways over there. Yes, we do. Mm, there was, of course, the route following the canals south. In particular, the route towards the Rhine. Uh, though I feared that to, end, uh, that to end up in Munich after nearly a week of travel would hardly please my hard-driving master. So many choices. All that remained was to choose how best to depart. Your funds have gone down, gone down a touch. We paid one pound for that apple. Yeah, um... Right. I wonder if there's a travel journey from Berlin to Munich, because... We bought that... I lost Rembrandt. We might want to go to... We need to go to Munich somehow. I wonder if there's a link there. If it is, if there isn't, we're gonna be a bit of a pickle. Um, we have to go to Berlin first, though. We already paid extra, so we're gonna spend the night. As the clock is ticking, we're gonna immediately start departing. With what remained of the day, um, we have some choices here. We can attend to Mr. Fogg. That's gonna improve his health. Or we can spend a few hours walking around, which might give us some extra information. So let's go with that. Spend a few hours walking around. I managed to have my pocket picked to the tune of 20 pounds. Or we can yeah, have some incident like that. So we lost 20 pounds. Hurry, pass by two. Yes. Onwards. Go. Our next leg was another short trip in a car. I bounded in, eager to get started. We hired the same driver as before. You two, she exclaimed. Get in. And converse. Let's talk again. Now it's with fog only. Uh, darn it. Okay, so we didn't get anything there. Suppose we can talk to the driver again. Boo. As we departed Amsterdam for Berlin, I begged Monsieur Fogg to allow me a turn at the wheel. He looked at the driver, smiled, and happily moved to one side. The wheel beneath my hands was like nothing I have experienced before. Um, almost an electrical sensation. As though thunderstorms rippled inside the wood itself. The mechanism of the car was quickly grasped. And the, the first lever produced a forward moment, moment, movement. The sideways levers controlled our gearing and hence rate of power. The wheel, of course, was to be turned rapidly at all times to release steam into the pistons. Uh, we made good time, though at the end of the day my palms were scorched and red hot. Now I know why drivers wear gloves. Relations with fog have improved. And his health is going down because this journey is rather harrowing. So we're going to attend to his health a bit, that's going to improve his health. We made good progress in the car. Toot, my friends, toot! Finally, we came upon sight, uh, upon sight of tiled roofs, the harbor, and the smell of herring. We had arrived in Berlin. And they're gonna be arriving very late at night. And that is unfortunate. So we're gonna have to spend one day for this. We are quickly gonna have to sell our stuff. We stayed for the night in the Hotel Adlon on Unter den Linden, uh, the main boulevard in the central Mitz district. 
from the window, the Brandenburg Gate was lit by un upturned gas lamps. Uh, I went for a late night stroll along the avenue past groups of people drinking at low tables. Hmm. I sat with a man who was demonstrating various engine noises uh, to a rapt audience. You're an artificer, I, I guessed. Every man is an artificer if he has a spanner to his name, he replied, laughing heartily. But I am a driver, the best driver in Germany. Hmm. What is your secret? I asked interest interestedly. He raised a glass to his foaming beer. Relaxation, he explained. Uh, exclaimed, and he wagged a finger, a very nice car. It seemed he was leaving tomorrow morning on a four-day trip to Bucharest via Prague and Budapest. I wondered whether he planned to drive to Bucharest with one hand on the wheel and the other holding a beer stein. But yeah, at least we found a route. Oh, so we can't actually make it to Munich by the looks of things. Um... Okay, fine, we have to explore. What other trips can we... Oh, there is a route, route to Munich. Good. Thank goodness. Starting to worry. Berlin, they tell me, was once filled with a glorious sound of people speaking French. <laughs> Not so anymore. Um, now there is nothing but the crashing of gears. Uh, every street corner is equipped with, ro with rotaries and wheel systems that spin glass globes this way and that. Their purpose is quite unclear, but uh, when I investigated one uh, by <laughs> uh, clambering up the pole uh, uh, using my acrobatic training, much to my master's horror, yeah, he didn't like he fog didn't like that. I found that it was a solid crystal sphere with no openings and nothing inside. The mystery persisted until nightfall when these globes all lit up and the people of Berlin clustered around the warmth of the globes to drink beer and converse. It seems they work hard here, but they celebrate with equal vigor. We avoided the festivities, I mean it's, fo it's fog, he doesn't like these kind of things, guarding our wallets and, headed <laughs> and heads against the thick wheat beer uh, they drink here, which looks to me more like a puree of oatmeal than a decent lager. The afternoon turned to evening and we finished our explorations of Berlin. Okay, first, quickly go there, sell this. Uh, in Khartoum, fine, that seems like fun. Uh, we are gonna go with the railman, I said, and said. Might as well buy this as well. Buy everything. Yeah, and now we get all the shipping routes of the Caribbean, because we bought that item. And we'll only have these routes as long as we maintain that thing in our inventory. So if we sell that, uh, we'll have to relearn all the routes. So there is a risk to picking up those items. But they have their uses. Depart, let's see if we can get to Munich. Like right now. Go. There was a timer there, so I have no idea when that would fire, but... Again, we have to keep going. Quite, quite fast, actually. But now we're gonna be <laughs> very well off, I think. So we'll have lots of money. We crossed from Berlin to Munich in a patched up steam carriage. The smoke pumps out of the back through a tall iron chimney, leaving a soot smudged wake which trailed behind us as a flag. Uh, our driver Christoph could not stop talking of his father, who was an engine driver and had just been promoted. The Kaiser has, has merged all the state railways into the Reich, uh, Reich Railway, he told us proudly. We have the most efficient system in all of Europe. <laughs> what of the Orient Express? I asked. He grinned. The parts near Germany work well. The rest of the line will no doubt be excellent once it is finished. So there's a little warning there about the Orient Express. Relations with the fog have improved slightly. Onwards, and we're gonna converse with Mr. Christoph here. Let's talk about Munich. Um, let's see, I want to go to... I don't know, uh, to Venice maybe? Yes, that's possible. Um, and we can talk about the travel from Venice to, I don't know, Dubrovnik. Uh, the monster is quite... <laughs> is he shy? Perhaps. 
Let's see, let's go just like all a little bit onwards. Uh. And we can use our item to basically keep talking. So back to Munich. Um, let's talk about uh, no, Belgrade. Uh, order to Nice. Okay, that's about as far as we can go. And at least that's going to give us a few more routes since we kept talking to him. So now he has a few more options. We could go to Venice and buy those masks we heard about. And we have an item that sells in Khartoum, which is all the way down in Africa. Not uh, not really where I want to go, but... Okay, let's see. One man passing, uh, passing called out, you are English. Of course, I could be nationalistic, but that would sit well with Pog. Indeed we are. Pip Pip, he called back in a crude imitation of Monsieur Fogg's accent. And he and his fellows uh, fell about laughing as we went, as he left them far behind. <laughs> you probably shouldn't laugh, right? I shook my head with distaste, and Monsieur Fogg nodded very slightly. So he approved of our actions there. And again, we want to try to make Fogg happy as best we can. The Lost Rembrandt will sell well here, so we're going to do that. Um, oh! Yes, I'll take the timetable. Sure, we'll take that item. More apples. As you can see, we gave away our apples to that guy. And since we now have the train table thing, we're going to get all the train routes of Europe. There are quite a few of them. Um, plan. Yeah, because all the routes are closed. Uh, tomorrow before 5 p.m., so we just missed it. That's one choice. Or we can travel to Venice. Can we travel back to Berlin? No. So we have some choices. Again, it's cars. Uh, I think we're gonna travel to Vienna. And jump on the Orient Express down to Istanbul. It is time to start uh, following a more sane route, I guess. I mean, we've made quite a lot of money now. Should have kept the uh, Englishman's wardrobe. We have items that sell extra in Khartoum. In Dubrovnik, Venice, Budapest. It's not all that valuable, but we will sell. If it, if it says the sum in big letters like here, that means it's worth a big sum of money. Otherwise, it's just worth more than in other places. So you can still make a profit from this, but the, these are the big items. And they'll tell you exactly which town you have to go to. So I guess there's nothing more to do here. Let's rest for the evening. We've already spent a week and we haven't even left Europe yet. The Franco-Prussian War has con have con had concluded but a year previously. <laughs> Thus my French accent was a, was a disadvantage during our short time in Munich. The concierge at our hotel was most suspicious when I approached the desk. Uh, I did not care for politics. Myself, what was the enmity of nations to me? Still, in order to avoid any untowardness, I uh, spoke as little as possible during our stay. Uh, and I tried to, to adopt a Germanic rather than Francophone expression to match, with perhaps mixed success if Monsieur Fogg's faintly quizzical looks were any measure. But he approved of that, because we basically tried to start, stay out of trouble. And we can always play the troublemaker, but that's not really the, the English gentleman way, right? Uh, we can't really do anything. Oh, actually, yeah, we spent the night, so we can do, can't do anything. We can do something. We're going to embark right away by Bozek car. It'll always say the means of travel, uh, in addition to the icon. So we've taken quite the round trip way to Vienna here. For inexplicable reasons, there was no way to board the Orient Express at Munich. Something strange to do with customs laws, though. Um, though, uh, da, 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 da. I understand it was actually retribution for unpaid fees. It seemed the Express charged countries for the privilege of being connected, rather than the other way around. 
we ended up cramming ourselves into a steam-powered car instead and chuffing along. Uh, let's converse with the new driver. Uh, talk about the route Vienna to Warsaw. Um, maybe we want to go all the way across here. From Warsaw to Minsk. Minsk to Moscow, we know that's a route. And if I want to talk about Moscow, I have to go there and then Moscow to Vladivostok. That's a long trip. From Vladivostok to, say, Yokohama. And we can bribe him with an apple to keep talking. Uh, let's say, talk to Yoko about Yokohama. Uh, Yokohama to... Huh. Manila. Manila. Manila, Manila to... Oh my goodness. Hong Kong. Okay. Oh yeah, that's why we couldn't talk too much, because we already know the routes. But at any rate, we get a lot of new routes learned. Okay. That's fine. And also one from Vladivostok. Now, the routes change slightly. They're mostly the same. But they will slight, change slightly. I mean, there are some options that won't open up in your first or second games. They'll open up in subsequent games. Just so you know. So some of the more more exotic adventures aren't available to us right now. Um, it was a pleasant enough ride, and our driver, one Michael Hertz, uh, regaled us with stories. By the way, there are quite a few of the quite a few people named in this game, and some of them are historical persons. Just so you know, you might encounter different people. That aren't exa that aren't fogs that aren't uh, Vern characters. And let's see, uh, we have stories of his time on the Indian subcontinent. It seemed he had been employed to haul palanquins along the Grand Trunk Road, connecting Kabul and Agra. Before Agra wa wandered away, he finished cryptically. Please notice this statement. <laughs> um, we might. I wonder if we're going to go past Agra. Mm. I demanded to know what he meant. But he merely grinned mysteriously and said, Ah, the tales I could tell. As we arrived, the driver put out his hand to shake. I'll be driving on to Budapest soon, if you want. So that probably gives us a route from... Oh yeah, that's the Grand Trunk Railroad he was talking about. And we arrive in Vienna. Da -da -da -da. I don't know. We are going to reach Istanbul. What about these items? Engineer, Dusty Road, Antalya. We might go there. Yeah, I'm going to buy cases. I, I'm a bit of a pack rat. I buy, I buy everything I can. Um, let's explore. I probably shouldn't... Oh, no, I shouldn't have done that, actually. We had roots. Ah, well. Uh, and we might have departed immediately. I forgot to check that. I had nearly forgotten my, my experience at the Paris Exposition, but the Vienna streets reminded me full force. The Austro-Hungarian Empire's might is built upon its armies of mechanical men. Mm. Their pewter faces are homogeneously, homo homogeneously handsome, um, though some have fine horsehair moustaches attached to their upper lips and subtle variations in the flex of their eyes. Um, as I watched, I was approached by a bookish fellow who hurried out from under the impressive eagle arched portcullis of the Zeughaus, the Imperial Armory. You think them fantastical, he demanded, a curious turn to his voice. I have seen Automata before, I replied, casually enough. Paris had its fair share after all. Not like these, the man replied. He stuck out his hand, Herr Danzer, apprentice engineer, in the Imperial Kriegs Orchester. And here we have some options. We can be a bit dishonest. There is actually an achievement here. I wonder, do I want to do this? Nah. There is, if you ply him with wine, you can steal his flute, which has some implications later on. There are quite a few little, as I said, there are quite a few of these little hidden adventures here. 
Um, we went to a cafe to talk. And once he started, he would not stop. Have you noticed none of the, the mechanical soldiers carry weapons? He hissed. What, what did you make of that? Uh, it is most unusual, I agreed. Inside each one is a Mozart Haydn device, perfectly tuned, her dancer replied. The song the soldiers sing is one of devastation. A battalion in harmony can punch through a steel wall. He drew a gilded flute from his scabbard and laid it on the table, looking at it thoughtfully. Uh, the flute is how you control them, I hazarded. He nodded sadly. Yes, we, the Musikresultaten, control them with our instruments. I am the finest flutist in the Vienna Kriegsorchester, he began, to my horror, to weep. Oh, we have the choice to steal the flute here too. We're not going to do that, we're going to be honest. I patted his hand to comfort him, and he gazed at me inconsolably. As a boy I dreamed of joining the Artificers Guild, he confessed. Voice hushed. But for someone born in this country, it is impossible. The Kaiser and the Guild are sworn enemies. Uh, the Guild, I reminded him, were politically neutral. He shook his head. The Guild are forbidden within the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Our autom automata are not Guild approved, they are our, our own. His mouth was a cold line. The Guild would not countenance the building such monsters. Thanking him for the coffee, I strolled back along the avenues, watching the city pass by with new eyes. Under its gilded and manicured beauty lurked something sharper and more bloodthirsty. Vienna was once the city of music, and the city of war was at once, yeah. Uh. Oh darn it, can't I actually board to the Orient Express? Dang it, okay. Uh. Oh, let's go that. Oh, darn it, I missed it by one minute. Didn't realize we could actually go now. Huh. Lost another day. Because I was careless here. Oh well. We found a room in the newly opened Hotel Imperial in a suite built for Duke Philip of Württemberg's maidservant. There was a delightful chamber group playing in the lobby. So once Monsieur Fogg was seen to, I took myself downstairs, settled down with a cognac and enjoyed the gentle music. After an hour or so, a group of men in fine dress came in and began making an unconscionable uh, noise at the bar. Uh, I listened in on their banter. I could hardly help it and learned a most interesting thing. It seemed these men were local councillors who had been supervising a large movement of troops towards the train station destined for Belgrade and then Istanbul. It had departed a few days earlier and now was all but ready for war. My heart sank. It seemed we had missed a possible trip onwards. Uh, but there was no use uh, crying over the spill of a spit lay. Uh, I returned to Fog, doubly, doubly determined to escape this beautiful, cruel city as soon as we could. Your character is now bright. Interesting. Uh, north or south? Uh, we're gonna go for Budapest. Before 7 p.m., so we have plenty of time. But it is time for a short break, I think. So I'll do that. And we'll be back shortly. Thank you for watching.